Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Anderson and today I'm going to show you a couple of examples on how we can use SQL's row number function together with a partition by clause in order to retrieve some pretty neat reports. Uh, this is all basic stuff, uh, but as it is not something we may see every day, uh, maybe some things are going to be new to you. So, okay, uh, what are these clauses then? Uh, row number, uh, as the name intuitively says, is a function that assigns a sequential integer to each row in a given window. So this is actually a whole new type of SQL function and it's called a window function. Um, what are these uh, so-called window functions? Uh, we are all familiar uh, with aggregate functions, right? Functions like average, sum, max, right? Those are functions that reduce or aggregate data from a set of rows into a single value. Window functions, however, are functions that calculate a result to each and every single row for the set of data that it received. So it is called a window function because it returns the same window, which is a set of the data, as the one it has received instead of just one value. Okay, but what does this difference even mean, right? Um, so the most impactful thing about this behavior is that it enables us to select a specific record, not by its values, as we are most used to, but by some feature relative to other records. Things like which one is the first or the last, um, or the most distant one from the rest of the group, or the one that had the biggest change from one to the next, uh, right? Uh, and that is really powerful. Uh, and the partition by clause uh, is the clause responsible for setting these little groupings that we that you might want. Um, this clause can be used uh, not just with window functions, but in a variety of contexts, even with our well-known aggregate functions. For example, um, here on the left, we have a select query that calculates a price average grouped by a column um, called group name, right? Nothing new here standard behavior, right? Um, on the right, we have the same average calculation. However, we can specifically set the grouping for the aggregate function with an over partition by clause instead of grouping the whole select. If you think about it, uh, we can even have as many of these aggregate functions as we like on the same query with, with totally independent groupings. So for example, we could have this price average per group name and also have a price average per expensive items. Say items with price above 800, we call expensive, right? Um, we would have something like this. Um, of course, this might not seem very useful, right? Um, because we're showing uh, we're showing a group information um, alongside each and every item of the group. That might not seem very useful, but we'll get there. Uh, but enough of the concepts, uh, let's see a real example. So imagine the following data structure for sending money. Uh, we have a table for clients, a table for payment requests called payments, and a table for the actual payment transaction called payouts. These payouts represent bank transfers attempts, bank transfer attempts um, that might not succeed, right? Um, so the, rela the relationship here is a client can have many payments and each one of these payments can have many payout attempts until one of them gets actually completed and the whole flow ends. Now imagine that you have thousands of clients and much more payments, right? When everything works, you have a one-to-one -one payment to payout relationship. But we can, we can have failed payouts, right, for whatever reason. Uh, for example, a typo on the account number or the account gets blocked or simply the bank takes too long to respond and your flow automatically fails the transfer, right? Anyway, things can go wrong and you end up with a bunch of failed payouts or even pending payouts that got stuck. So now you have a need to, a, to better visualize your data. Uh, maybe maybe for debugging something or maybe for creating a report with Power BI, right? But imagine you want to see each payment with its status on how the respective payout is and when it was last updated. 
naturally this information is on the last payout and only on the last payout. So for that, we can use the row number function um, inside a partition inside a partition of the data that is sorted by the most recent updated data. Uh, so the function is going to number each row from the same payment. And you can see here, we have, uh, as you can see here, we have for each payment, um, payouts one, two, and three, right? On this row numbering column. Of course, we want to return only the record with one as its row number, right? Number one, which is the first record um, representing the last payout. One little problem though, um, window functions cannot be used inside where clauses, right? We cannot go uh, just put a where row numbering is equal to one, right? Um, and if you think about it, that, that makes sense um, because the where clause, the where clause first limits the set of the data and then the window function can calculate its result for each row. Right, so we can go around that with subqueries or CTEs, um, common table expressions. Uh, for this example, we'll be using CTEs. So let's take a look. Uh, so with the CTE, we calculate everything, and then we only select what we want to show, which are only the records where row number returned one, and we also don't need to show the row number calculation anymore. So with that, we are able to return payment data coupled with the last payout attempt. And of course, um, this is returning payments from all clients, um, right? Because we're not filtering by client ID or anything, right? Um, and we don't have more records than that, uh, but y'all get the point. Uh, so this technique is really powerful. You can probably think of another way to arrive on the same result, especially using nested queries. Uh, but things can get really complex with structured growth. And that is when the true power of this technique shows. So let's imagine that now we also have bank information for each client. More importantly, the client can change this information at any time. So the payout attempt needs to store where it has actually tried to make the payment. <coughs> uh, so this is our structure now. Uh, we have a table account. Uh, the client has a, an account ID and the payout two has an account ID. Um, still on the same, uh, still on the same example, we can now show the account. So we can see very quickly that the payment of $30, for example, uh, right, uh, which is a succeeded one, right? The payment of $30, which is a succeeded one, uh, have an account number of 0001. Um, and and the the payment of ten dollars, which turned failed, has has a different account number, right? So this leads us to suspect that the problem with the payment, uh, well, this leads us to suspect what the problem with the payment is, right? But that's only that that can only be a suspicion. We can improve that assessment though, uh, with just a small tweak on the partition by clause. Uh, we are able to see not only the last payout, but all the payouts that had different account numbers on them. So uh, with this, right, uh, we create a different partition for different accounts. Um, that way the row number with result one will be the last payout attempt for that specific account number. And with this data, uh, we can see that the 20 and $30 payments now each have uh, two different account numbers on them. And we can see that uh, the most recent update shows that uh, yesterday, so for example, for the payment two, we had uh, we have a payment on, the, on today and we have a, a payment yesterday, right? So the payment yesterday already failed and we can see that the 10 account was used. Um, the $30 payment, um, we also have a today and a yesterday, and the yesterday is the same 10 account number and, and it's failed. And today we have a different account and it's already succeeded, right? So the $10 payment though, um, remains with the same account number that failed for the other two. Uh, and now we can safely say that this is a wrong account number and that's why the payment is failing. 
Well, uh, very well. In my case, um, the one I wanted to show you guys, when I faced a problem like this, well, we had a bug where for whatever reason, a change on the account number would sometimes get rolled back, right? Um, after a few days. And then the client would later just change it again without even noticing the problem, right? So several payments would fail while others would be fine. And only after a couple of weeks when the client would come complaining, people would turn to look for the problems with these payments. And by that time, the account number was already fixed. So it was much more complicated to understand the problem. Uh, so creating these views helped a lot in understanding what was happening, and especially on showing others the wrong behavior in a very quick manner. So, okay, guys, um, this is all I had. This was just in a small case, of course. Um, it's not always you're going to have to resort to a SQL query to solve a problem like this, but it, it is a good thing to know and helps a lot on support, right? Um, you know, where you commonly need custom reports with custom pieces of data. Hope you all had a good time. Um, we can discuss it more on the comments section. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I uh, wish you all a good one. Bye.